Hi, I'm Tim Zaykowski. The premise of this show is simple. I have conversations with entertainers that no one's ever heard of. I'll be shooting the breeze with actors, directors, writers, comedians, athletes, musicians. Simple entertainment. Hi, welcome to Anybody Who Ain't Anybody. My name's Tim Zaykowski. Today we are in the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase in beautiful downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan. Special guest, Mr. Dave Landau. Dave, Hello. thank I'm, you for being here. Oh, no problem. I'm nobody. And don't forget that. And you saw him here first. Now, I just got done seeing your show. Yes. The first time. I've been yes. hearing about you. I've been hearing some good things about you. And uh, a, a good friend of mine, Connie Ettinger. I know Connie very well. I know actually. Connie very well. And me too. And she talks very well about you. And Roger. Roger's talks a good nice. man. Runs one of the greatest clubs in the country, in my opinion. Yeah, it's... Uh, He's very gracious. I gotta get him on the show. You know, he's kind of camera shy, but he's funny as hell. He doesn't care much for it, but a hilarious guy. Yeah, he's very funny. Very and funny guy. Seems to be making fun of me. He thinks it's, you know. Very funny. Yeah. I enjoyed it. You guys weren't there for that. <laughs> it's good. But people ribbon. seem to make fun of me a lot. Now, you got to work with Elvira Kurt this evening. Yes, I did. I was working with Elvira. Elvira. And she's very funny. Very, very funny. I thought she was very vulnerable, very conversational, just very good on stage all around. I was very impressed with her act. It was, uh, it was different. She went from just doing material to shooting the breeze. Oh, certainly. To um, giving the people in the audience a hard time for having their arms crossed like this. Which oh, is, it was great. Which is amusing. Cause... A very small crowd, people sitting like this. Yeah. Well, what it really is, is it's vulnerability, though. That, that's what makes you do that. And I think that's some of the essence of comedy, is just putting yourself out there like that. You're literally having a conversation with them. And I think that she, she's great at it. And I yeah, think that's she, why she does so well. She made it real smooth. It's a bug. <laughs> it's a bug. <laughs> this show doesn't get any smoother this than this. This is a beer. This is as smooth as it goes, people. That's right. Now, today was the first time I, I've saw, I saw you, yes. your act. Uh, and again, Roger said you through. Dying laughing. He's going to uh, headline you here. That's excellent. That's correct, yes. Have you headlined anywhere else? Um, all over the country, especially next year. Uh, Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle. Okay. Um, pretty Does much Mark anywhere. rep you? Is that Mark is my manager. Mark's your manager. Yes. Yeah. yes, he is. He's another one of the good guys in the business. Um, Mark and Roger are two of the people who really believe in comedy, really understand it, really want it to do well at their club. It's not really about, look at this shit. Sorry, I swore. <laughs> Start over. <laughs> God. Mark and Roger are really good people. They want everything to go well in the business. They want to have good people at the club. Even if it's not a draw, they care about the essence of comedy to make sure it's a quality show. Very few people still do that. Well, and they understand about putting certain acts together with other acts. They, you know, there's a bunch of bookers that just book whoever they can get in. Oh, yeah. bookers they, have booked a juggler with another juggler. Right. It's ridiculous. And uh, Roger knows comedy. He's been doing it for 20-some years. I think Ridley's been doing a similar amount of time. Uh, Ridley started in 1978. Actually, the MC feature headliner thing, he actually invented. Oh, okay. And he was, he even opened for, I think it was 10 years he said he opened, he went up as the opening act. Oh, he's done opening acts. His brother's been an opening act. He's, uh, he's yeah, and he's pretty funny, so, which yeah, is great yeah, for yeah, a club owner. Yeah, and he's, and, and when Roger's he says, funny, and so when he says weird. yes, he means yes, and when he says no, he means no. And he's, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be honest guys, and that's what I like the most um, about him. Being blunt, I guess, is part of being honest, and they both do that. You know, they just go, this is the deal, and that's the deal. So your job is to earn what you've gotten, I guess. Yeah, and they, they know that. They know everybody, all the, the, the big comics. I told Mark I was doing this, and he goes, I want you to come to my room and do this. And he says, uh, in the early 80s, he, they were doing interviews with Seinfeld and Tim Allen and Rosie and the, oh, the certainly. people. And he goes, I don't know where they are. He says, so don't lose these interviews, because you never know who you're talking to. Oh, absolutely. They, they could be. You never know who you're talking to. So now, how long have you been in business? Um, I've been in the business of comedy for a while, probably about six years. I've, and I guess that's not a while to most standards, but I'm only 25. Um, I've been uh, a comedian, a stand-up comedian professionally for about four and a half. For about four and a half. Oh, yep. so it didn't take you that long. No. No. What got you on stage for the first time? Um, I went to high school for five years. I was pretty much terrible at everything, uh, except making people laugh. So right. pretty much the only thing that I had a choice to do was pretty much stand-up comedy. Do you, have you done stage plays at all? 
Um, well, I did a show I wrote called Meet in the Middle, which was uh, pretty much a metaphor for uh, anal sex. Just letting you know. That probably won't make the tape. Uh, but it was no, it'll be there. There'll just be complaints, <laughs> but I love those. It was called Meet in the Middle. We had a big song and dance number, and another <laughs> show I did, which is all about gay sex. And, uh, song and dance. We actually, uh, the other one I wrote was um, called The DeVito Code. And we wrote it at the popularity of the book. The movie hadn't come out or nearly, but it was just when the book was like the main thing to read. Right. It's called The DeVito Code and had to do with the hype of the book, politics, everything. We just kind of meshed everything together and made it into something we, we really liked. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, is no comedian made it in this industry without bombing. That's what got them here. Failing is what makes you great. Nobody has learned anything in their life from success. Failing is what, what has made you made you better. Then I must be pretty good because I've done some serious bombing. Well, you failed and you just haven't gotten better. But that <laughs> happened. <laughs> and thank you for pointing that, that out. Happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it happened sure. eventually. You can learn from your mistakes. <laughs> I mean, you haven't learned from your mistakes. I haven't yet. yet you just but you seem to think your mistakes work, which is weird. Which is I don't understand fine. it myself. You can learn from them. I'm kidding. Now I'm half kidding. Yeah, there's just. You know, way less than half kidding. <laughs> yeah. no joke You're being serious. Uh, Dave Landau's funny. Uh, look for him in the clubs. Look for him all of you. Get a chance to see you have a website that you want. Watch the show. Uh, it's DaveLandau.com. Uh, please visit it, myspace.com slash Dave Landau. And turn in the show. It's kind of nice for people who are looking to get into the business to hear something about the business that you know you're about to get into. So thank him for having this show. Well, you're very welcome. And Dave, thank you for being on the show. I appreciate hey, no it. Problem, it's very nice to meet thank you. you. And I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. All right, sir. Thank right. you again. Of course. Peace.